John Dennis was born in Jersey City, the son of a longshoreman and a city hall clerk. Now a businessman and entrepreneur, he has been a pro-liberty San Franciscan for 20 years. After graduating from Fordham University with a degree in business administration, John co-founded Human Scale, a design firm specializing in office ergonomics. In June, he defeated pro-war Republican Dana Walsh in the 8th Congressional District's GOP primary and is now running against House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. By the way, Pelosi was invited to be in this panel or send someone in her place, but her office declined to participate. But John is here. Please welcome John Dennis.
how much animosity our foreign policy engenders. And in that moment, the shroud was lifted from my face, my, over my eyes, and my life changed. And I said, I've got to get involved in this, and that's led me to this path today. And in fact, when I decided to, to run against Nancy Pelosi, it was based on a number of different things, but also one simple proposition. Wouldn't it be interesting if an anti-war Republican ran against Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. I know, as I said before, it's not a political event, it's not a campaign event, but I have to say that as much as I'm going to talk a little bit also about Bob Woodward's book, uh, and some insights I have there, um, as much as it's Obama's war, it's also Nancy Pelosi's war, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't it ironic that the representative from San Francisco that it's her war? I mean, she's got the, the, the war power resides with Congress. That's crystal clear. She's offered no resistance whatsoever. And for that, she deserves as much blame as anyone else for what's happening. Yeah. I just say that all wars are started on a lie, and even the good war, the Afghanistan war, is no different. I meant I actually printed it out. I meant to bring it with me, but um, it's it's available. This is the day and age of the internet. You probably can pick it up on your phones. There is a on the website. Uh, the FBI's website, they have a list of the 10 most wanted, uh, and of course Osama bin Laden is on that list. And some clever journalists noticed somewhere along the way, when they looked at that profile, that he was charged with the bombings in Tanzania, of the embassy in Africa, the U.S. Embassy in Tanzania. He was charged with the bombing of the U.S. Embassy in Kenya, but guess what he wasn't charged with? Bombings on my level. So that clever journalist contacted the FBI, the spokesperson was dumbfounded, and went back and said, well, let me find out. And she called him back and said, uh, uh, yeah, he, he, we don't have that on the website because there's not enough evidence. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not going to go in that direction of 9-11. I'm going to go in this direction of 9-11, which is uh, to say that, um, that along, uh, not just Nancy Pelosi, but the rest of the Congress, they relinquished and derelict in their duties, Declare war. It is so critical that they do that. Um, first of all, it's the constitutional obligation. But this business of giving the authorization to use military force gives one man the authority to go to war, and that man or that office has the authority to stop it and can see what the consequences are. This country should never go to war again without a declaration.
And if this, the, the general was confused to give me an exit option, ultimately they would, I would present them with two choices. At 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, one of two things is going to be on my desk. Either an exit option or your resignation. Instead, I'm sorry to say this, but I feel like we're being run by military weapon. When someone can't, when the, the President of the United States can't stand up. By the way, I would also have the President probably hunker down in, a, in my bedroom and lock the door for the rest of the night, wait for 8 o'clock to come around. <laughs> we have an awful combination now. We have a frightened citizenry, frightened that uh, some salivating uh, bogeyman is around every corner, only sleeping to dream about killing us some more. Uh, we have that combined with a, uh, a well-armed military, anxious, excited to be in the middle of a conflict, combined with a credit card. <laughs> it's a bad combination. It's a recipe for endless war. And it's so important that this room at some point be overflowing, because until it is, I'm afraid it really will not stop. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, it, war is, is also devastating, not just from a, um, from a personal point of view, it's also devastating to econ an economy. The, uh, the great libertarian, Lou Rockwell, is fond of repeating the, the story, which I'll paraphrase, of uh, Lou Lehrman, who was a former gubernatorial candidate in New York, who said that uh, for those who uh, think that war is good for an economy, well, let's do this. If you think war is good for an economy, let's rev up the war machine, let's get the armaments moving, and let's meet China out in the middle of the Pacific. And then we'll take all the armaments that we built up, and they'll take all the armaments that they built up, and we'll dump them in the ocean. That's what good war is for an economy. Um, someone else touched earlier on, on how this country has to uh, reevaluate itself in terms of how we have failed. We've been in many, many wars, too many wars in this country. There are a couple countries around the world that haven't been to war for hundreds of years, and yet we managed to find ourselves in them every few years. I think, what are we at, about 24 wars or so in the last, since the founding of this country? We failed in that regard. We have to re examine what we are doing, why we are doing it. There's no reason just because we are an industrial power or a waning one, perhaps, why we continue to stay at war. Uh, it's a uh, it's a terrible thing to think of. I have to say that on a personal level, the impact that my daughter's made on me regarding uh, the future uh, has forced me to examine you know, my positions in the direction of the country. Uh, it's also forced me to examine how I might feel if those were her boots. Every time this, as long as this war continues, letters will be, uh, letters of bereavement will be delivered to families whose anguish I cannot even imagine. It's unconscionable that it's happening for political reasons.